สวัสดีค่ะ And welcome to today's edition of Morning Focus. I am Don Sini Gurdia Pimon Pon. And I'm Aglit Bunyai. Now, in today's news top stories, the Prime Minister a p i s i t w e h a s h i w a yesterday came out to defend the Department of Special Investigations. Now, that's despite criticism following the release of one of their more controversial reports on the death of a Reuters cameraman. And the opposition. k u t a i Party yesterday unveiled its list of candidates for the next general election. Right, and we'll also have uh, comments from the Thai newspapers, and that will be regarding the opposition censure debate. And we'll also have a lot more coming up after the break. Right. And welcome back to Morning Focus. As always, we will start with the headlines. We do have developments following the fate of the Thai nursing student in New Zealand, and this is from Kom Chat Luk. Now, fingerprints confirm the dead body identified as one of the Thai student. Now, authorities found another body in the building ruins in Christchurch, New Zealand, and uh, the body was wearing a Thai amulet and is trying to find out whether the woman is another. Thai victim. Meanwhile, the fate of the fate of the other four Thais stuck in the building remains unknown. Now, New Zealand authorities estimate the number of victims from the deadly quake could be as high as 240. Right. So, still waiting for to find out the fate of the last four people there. Correct. Now, over in uh, m a t i s h o n newspaper, uh, the headline there is: Big police question DSI findings over six deaths involving Aka machine guns. Now, this report uh, followed some other findings. Uh, an independent, um, uh, an independent in investigation panel on the case says that they, uh, the anger was uh, from both sides, and that's both the troops and the red shirts, and that is what triggered the clash. Now, the reds were angry because the government had tried to disperse the troops, while the tro troops were not too happy because they felt humiliated as they had been pressured to bow before protesters during the event before the crackdown. Now, also involved in this story is the Committee to Protect Journalists, that's the CPJ, and they've said that the contradiction of the preliminary findings uh, uh, of the investigation into the Japanese cameraman's death had raised questions over the independence of the government's investigation. Yes, and we have other news in Thai Rat. Now, Prayut Chan Osha, the army chief, blasts the mobs and tells the Thais to learn about their rights. Now, this is, of course, about the recent uh, scandal over the. Dispersal of red shirt protesters. Now, General Prayut threatens the mob to stop destroying the nation and causing further conflicts by unreasonably demanding their rights. Now, he said the police and soldiers also lost their lives during the crackdown. However, they did not make any demands on their own, and they do have rights too. Right now, we uh, leave the Thai newspaper headlines and we move into our uh, top story. Now, uh, the Prime Minister yesterday came out to defend the Department of uh, Special Investigations after it came under fire for the latest controversial report on the killing of a Reuters cameraman. That's Mr. Hiroyuki Muramoto. Now, the new report shifted blame away from the troops, who, according to initial reports, were the ones responsible for the death of the cameraman. Now, the DSI said that Mr. Muramoto's body had, in fact, been. Um, Affected by AK-47 bullets and had marks in them from that gun, and that the soldiers involved in the clash were not carrying that type of rifle. Now, there's since been speculation that the DSI updated report had been influenced by army ranking figures who persuaded the department to change its stance over the results. And the prime minister yesterday uh, insisted that the DSI's investigation into the death of Mr. Muramoto was impartial and free from political pressure. The prime minister said the DSI. Latest report saying Mr. Muramoto was killed by a bullet, probably fired from an AK-47 rifle, was not final. Now, the, <clears throat> the assumption about the type of weapon was just an initial finding, which needed further scrutinization by the police. Now, the prime minister insisted that the DSI has been doing its job by keeping the public updated about the new findings relevant to the case, adding that he wonders why no one has questioned the DSI's. Initial finding when they said state authorities were involved. Now the prime minister also said he believed the DSI's work was free from political pressure because it had to be based on investigation and facts and evidence. Now prime minister, deputy prime minister rather, s u t e p t u k Suban, in charge of security affairs, also insisted yesterday that the government did not meddle with the DSI's probe. 
right now um, there's someone else involved mm -hmm. in this never wanting to be left out mm -hmm. and that is the Pure Thai Party List MP Khun Jatupon Prompan who has now threatened to file charges against DSI Chief Tarit Pengdit and the DSI Advisor Police Lieutenant General Ampon Jaru uh, Chinda for the alleged distorting of the facts uh, surrounding the death of Mr. Muramoto. Now, Kun Jatupon had said the initial report from the DSI had said that the Japanese cameraman was hit by a bullet which came from the direction of the soldiers during the clash. Now, Kun Jatupon has said that if the DSI chief had in fact bothered to talk to the army, then he would know that uh, the Thai army unit uh, also possess an undisclosed number of AK-47 rifles, which are they uh, are not officially registered to the army. So they could have, in fact, had <laughs> AK-47s on them. Mm -hmm. And with that, we move on to another topic, uh, the upcoming election. Now, it will be the season to be jolly because the Pua Thai Party has unveiled its list of 310 candidates in the constituency system for the next general election, which is expected to be called once the lower house is dissolved. Now, the candidates include former Pua Thai MPs, their children, relatives, and candidates supported by the Red Shirt United Front for Democracy Against Dictatorship, or UDD, uh, or the party's key figures. Right, now we have uh, a list of people who are uh, being up for nomination. Now we have uh, Kun Go Son Bantama, the younger brother of Nopadon Bantama, the legal advisor to the ousted Prime Minister, that's Taksin Shinawat, and there's also Chanasak Atawong, who is the relative of UDD co-leader Suporn Atawong. Now they will contest in the Korn Rajasima constituency. And others we have a mom, Luang Natapon Tewakun, a cousin of Natakon Tewakun, or Kun Plum, a former Bangkok governor candidate, and Ji Rayud Huang Sap, a Pua Thai deputy spokesperson, will both run in the Bangkok constituency, Kun Arklet. Right, now there's even more. There's the <laughs> Army Lieutenant Sunisa Alert Pakawat, who had made headlines uh, uh, after writing two books about Taksin after the September 19th coup back in 2006. Uh, they will also contest in the Bangkok constituency. However, what is being called as the biggest surprise is the inclusion of Waratid Chayanan, who is the son of a Democrat MP. Now, Kun Waratid had said he'd already discussed his intention to work uh, with, uh, with Pua Thai with his father, uh, Terpong. Uh, Chai Yanan, who had not objected to this idea at all. Right, and Kun Tut Pong, his father, said that his son made the decision on his own without inform <coughs> informing him and did not even know that his son wanted to run in the Pa constituency. <coughs> However, he said he was confident that his son will not be able to take the votes away from him in the election if they had to compete in the same constituency in Pa. Right, now, uh, Pua Thai Party uh, Chairman Chawalit Yong Chai Yud yesterday said that one of the key reasons that the party is going to compete and win uh, in the next general election was to bring back home a person, this is a quote from him, mm -hmm. to bring back home a person who has left the motherland because of a political problem. Mm -hmm. Do we know who that is? Um, maybe <coughs> the, the person who said the UN is not our father, is that possibly? No comment. All right. And with that, we move <coughs> on to the censure debate timeline. Uh, the government whip said yesterday it would propose the debate dates uh, during <coughs> March 9th to March 12th and the voting date on March 13th. Now, the Pua Thai Party has uh, said to group the <coughs> Prime Minister and other nine ministers in its proposed censure debate. Meanwhile, public op has opinionated that with the prospects of super consu uh, consumer good prices, the opposition could do better in the upcoming no-confidence debate than rambling about last year's political violence. Now, in radio programs and online media yesterday, many people said that the opposition party might do a better job if it focused only on the household <coughs> economic issue, which is now a pressing concern among the public. Right. Now, um, <coughs> also uh, speaking on this, is we have uh, Senator Rosana who said that the opposition has its priorities uh, wrong and that its debate revolves around the crackdown last year <coughs> and is not a response to the current needs of the people affected by price hikes. <coughs> Now, she said that the government failed uh, management of palm oil and the prospects of soaring goods prices should be the things to dominate the no-confidence debate, adding that the debate, which targets political violence and uh, those related to the red shirts, 
uh, and also the Prime Minister's dual nationality was nothing but nonsense. Correct. And it is also a popular topic among the Thai newspapers columnists, some of whose comments we will share with you today. Now, Ma Luk Chan of Thairat said that the number of ministers to be grilled in the debate is too many to a uh, point and that the censure debate might lose the momentum. Also, the four days of debate is too long and that the audience may be bored if uh, and it may they may lose their interest. Now, the writers suggest that the debate should be concise and straight to the point and that the debate itself should not last more than three days at most. Now, more importantly, he said the opposition must manage the time properly. He then recalled the last debate in which the opposition missed out on grilling two ministers because the time had expired. Right. Now, also uh, commenting on this, we have uh, Lompli and Ted, who meanwhile pointed out that the, uh, the fact that the rest of the coalition, uh, uh, who is also in the alliance, besides the Democrats and uh, Bum Jai Tai, uh, were being spared in this okay. censure debate. Now, that's with reference to... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Cha Thai Patana and also Pur Pandin parties. Now he said that Pur Thai might have wanted to keep them as their future allies uh, in the case that the party did in fact win the election and the right to form the new government. Now uh, he said that the opposition had chosen the right uh, timing for the censure debate because the growing dissent from the public towards the government and its alleged mismanagement and corruption. Right, and in the meantime, Zoom reminded MPs of their use of language and their behavior during the debate, as the debate couldn't argue it can get a little bit rowdy. He said that in previous debates, some MPs used foul language and were too emotional, while heckling and protests were often employed to interrupt with the debate. Now, since the debate is normally broadcasted live to audiences nationwide, the writer expressed concern that Thai youths may emulate the improper behavior of our legislators. Right, now, uh, with our last story, now we move on to Daily News newspaper. Mm -hmm. still, still on the same topic, but from a different newspaper. Uh, the columnist here said that he doubted the opposition's three main uh, issues that they wanted to debate. Now, that's the crackdown of the red shirt protests, the massive corruption by the government, and also mismanagement by the government. Now, regarding the issue about the crackdown of the red shirt protesters, the writer said he wondered why the defense minister, General Brawid Wongsa Wan, had not been targeted in the censure debate, despite the fact that he played a pivotal role in the crackdown. And why was it that only uh, Deputy Prime Minister in charge of security affairs, Suteb Turkzaban, was in fact being targeted? Now, the writer suspected that, in fact, someone was pulling the strings behind Kun Ming Kwan Sang So Wan, and this might, in fact, uh, be using the censure debate as a tool for nothing other than political bargaining. And he also said that the debate was not intended to expose the truth about the men in black who uh, were involved in the protests and the thing that everyone wanted to know about, but was in fact only being used to influence the upcoming election. All right, and with that, we move on to our cartoon, and this is from Kom Chat Luk. Now, the first man tells his friend Tu, who is the red shirt leader, Chatupan Prom Pan, uh, saying that the prime minister is a British national and could be taken to the world court over the deaths of the 91 people. Right, and his friend replies to him, so could you tell him to sue a certain Montenegro national over the killing of 2,500 people during his administration also? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and there you have it. That was our cartoon, and that wraps up the edition, today's edition of Morning Focus. You can uh, email your comments at uh, morningfocus at postnews.co.th and you can also check out our past clips from the multimedia section labeled under Morning Focus. And with that, let's move on.